Escape from inactivation is an instrumental piece I wrote to represent the biological process of X chromosome inactivation in females. The arrangement also takes a deeper look into what happens when genes escape from inactivation. In this presentation, I'll first go over the biology of X chromosome inactivation, and then I'll go into the concept of escape genes and their effects in human health. In the second half, I'll go over how I designed the musical piece, Escape from Inactivation, which represents these concepts further through musical motifs. Let's get started. The human genome is comprised of 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each chromosome is made up of tightly wound coils of DNA. And the 23rd chromosome pair plays a key role in sex determination. Typically, a human male will have a pair of X and Y chromosomes, while females will have two X chromosomes. In females, these chromosomes undergo a unique process in order to ensure that the X chromosomal genes aren't overexpressed. During development, one X chromosome is randomly silenced. This becomes the inactive chromosome. And the non-silenced one is the active chromosome. This concept is called X chromosome inactivation. The silenced chromosome can either be the maternally inherited chromosome or the paternally inherited chromosome. This selection is typically random across different cells, which means there is heterogeneity across the organism, or often called mosaicism. Now, let's get back to the chromosome pair level. Despite being initially silenced, some genes on the inactive chromosome will still find a way to express themselves. These genes are called escape genes because they escape from inactivation. Here are some things we know about escape genes. Up to one-third of X-linked genes have been found to escape inactivation, and those that do escape aren't as expressed as their active chromosome counterparts. Similar to how inactivation is randomly selected, Escape genes aren't limited to just one of the inherited chromosomes, but occur on both the maternal and the paternal chromosome. And we also know that escape isn't rare. All examined human females experience escape in at least 10% of genes on the inactive X chromosome. There are additionally 12 to 20% of genes that escape in some females and not in others. So these genes variably escape inactivation. So how does escape affect humans? Are the effects detrimental? And if so, to what degree? Researchers today are studying this question and trying to understand the effects of escape in disorders. Studies have found escape genes may play a role in autoimmune disorders, such as lupus. You may have heard of lupus from famous artists who experience it, like Tony Braxton or Selena Gomez, who often describe it as feeling constantly fatigued due to their immune system's abnormal response. X chromosomal escape genes have also been associated in certain cancers. Since X escape typically occurs in females, these disorders are unsurprisingly female biased, meaning they occur more often in females than in males. But you can also find cases where escape might actually be protecting females from X linked diseases, resulting in male bias disorders. Not all cases of X escape will have detrimental effects, but for those cases which do, the more we can understand about how and why escape happens, the more insight we'll have into its effects on disorders. In order to represent the concept of X chromosome inactivation and escape, I composed a musical piece to represent the biological processes involved. Each section of the piece represents a different phase of the process. In phase one, both chromosomes are active, so you'll hear a motif representing both components. In phase two, one of the chromosomes are selectively inactivated, so the inactive X chromosome's motif will be suppressed. And in phase three, the inactive chromosome will escape inactivation, and you'll hear this uniquely represented alongside the active chromosome. Now, let's break down the music theory behind each phase. Phase one is equal expression from both chromosomes during development. Each note you see represents genes on the X chromosome. The gliding up and down the scale represents the spread of genes along the X chromosome. 
In the beginning, to symbolize equal expression, the X chromosome motif will be played by both chromosomes. In this segment, each chromosome will be sent to a different speaker. So one chromosome will be played through the right speaker, and the other chromosome will be played in the left speaker. Here's how the chromosome motifs will sound. And in case you were wondering, I did intentionally construct the piece so that the X chromosome motif actually resembled an X chromosome. Moving on to phase two, we have selective inactivation. Let's break this down one chromosome at a time. The left side will signify the X chromosome undergoing inactivation. So the motif will gradually become suppressed. Here's how that will sound. The right side will represent the chromosome that remains active. I took a creative music liberty here to transition the motif from a synth instrument to the piano in order to better carry the melody. The key concept here is just that this motif stays active. all together. Finally, in phase three, we'll start to hear certain notes from the inactive motif escape inactivation. This is achieved by expressing these notes at a higher velocity, which is represented by the red colored notes. Here's how that will sound. Also, since we know that up to 33% of genes can escape inactivation, I made sure that only a third of the notes escaped suppression. This means that for each motif segment of 16 notes, only 5 to 6 of the notes will be expressed. And here's how both the inactive and active X chromosome will sound, now that the inactive chromosome has experienced escape. Music 